Today's reflection from St. Peter's Wellsbourne is from our Lent book, The Living Cross. Wednesday, the 3rd of March. Cover up. 2 Samuel, chapter 12, verses 7 to 14. Then Nathan said to David, You are a man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I anoint you king over Israel, and I deliver you from the hand of Saul. I gave you master's house to you, and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you all Israel and Judah, and if this had been too little, I would have given you even more. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down in Uriah and Heti with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Amorites. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house because you despise me and took the wife of Uriah and Heti to be your own. This is what the Lord says, out of your own household I am going to bring calamity on you before the, your very eyes and I will take your wives and give them one who is close to you and he will sleep with your wives in broad daylight. You did in secret but I will do this thing in broad daylight before all Israel. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, The Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. But because of, by doing this, you have shown utter contempt of the Lord. The son born to you will die. The word of the Lord comes to David through the prophet Nathan blasting away David's lies and cover-up job. Though David may have thought that he had sorted out his sin, he had slept with his soldier's wife while lounging at home when he should have been at war. He can hide no longer. His wrong deeds, the pun punishment for what should have been death for both him and Bathsheba, have been exposed. The ideal king had fallen from grace by his act, which led to another sinful act, and another. The Hittite soldier, upstanding, though a foreigner, refused to sleep with his now pregnant wife when David beckoned him back from battle, so David had him killed. Adultery turning to murder, and the cover-up spiralled out of control with David's power as king hoodwinked into the king, into thinking that he could get away with his crimes. But unlike neighbouring kings, who may have escaped punishment, even if discovered, David served a higher God, the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, stops David in his tracks. Nathan delivers the verdict. David will live but no longer will enjoy easy victories. Now, as the Lord tells him, he'll have to face strife and enmity from within his own family, and the child he and Bathsheba have conceived will die, a consequence of, if not the punishment for, his sin. His wrongful actions have rippled effect on his and his family's life, and the life of the kingdom. Yet David chose himself still to be the ideal king. Like Saul, who evaded repentance until a half-hearted stab at it was his last option, David confesses his sin immediately, naming him with whom he has spurned. I have sinned against the Lord. He makes no excuse and blames no one else. He knows he is at fault. His heart is open to correction. He repents 
and petitions the Lord on behalf of his young child through fasting and prayer. Although the story, while worth reading from 2 Samuel, reads like a horrifying modern account of lies, subterfuge, murder and deceit, all with protagonists as the one culpable, we can yet find comfort in it. The one describes by the Lord as a man after my own heart, Acts 13 to 22, sinned in catastrophic proportions. But God forgave him and had mercy on him. Although we do wrong, we can receive forgiveness and be those characterised as having the heart of the Lord. We can also heed David's example of immediate admitting our wrongs when confronted without turning to blame or excuses, or better yet, not plotting an intricate cover-up job. Although David suffered earthly consequences for his sin, he remained God's chosen leader for his people. Today, consider before the Lord any hidden sins that may be lurking in the back of your mind and heart. Ask the Helper, the Holy Spirit, to reveal anything that might be keeping you from communion with God, that you may confess and be released from its power. May we know the joy of being forgiven, cleansed and made new. Father God, my heart fills with sadness when I think of the crimes David committed against Bathsheba and Uriah. Though you forgave him, the innocent suffered. This feels wrong, simply wrong. I see it happening in the world when women and children are raped in war and young boys are turned into soldiers and it breaks my heart. Have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Show me how to grasp these mysteries, if they are graspable. May you help me to know how I can make a difference in this big situation in the world. Lord, I feel small and without influence. Help me to know what I can do to be a voice for the voiceless, that I may stand up as their advocate.